games begin? On the April 28th edition of the Pros and Con, the Northwestern players make history. We're talking football, casting votes to create a union. Why changing sports isn't a bad thing after all. Plus, the NFL draft is approaching. Kevin Elliott of the Buffalo Bills joins the show and tells me why it's not so bad to go undrafted. That and more next on the Pros and Con. Welcome in to the newly formed Pros and Con, formerly Sports Guys in Ties. I'm Jason Kahn. You know, it's not such a bad thing to change, right? We all change. We all evolve eventually. And that includes professional sports too. Major League Baseball has undergone changes, and we're still watching. The National Basketball Association, they've undergone changes, and we're still watching. Same with the NHL and the NFL. We know about you know, players protesting, referees protesting, and yet we've all come out of it, I think, for the better. And in this case, it has to do with college sports, college athletics. And that is the headliner for this week. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing. The Northwestern and football players casting a historic vote, deciding whether or not. They're going to be forming a union. But those votes right now being withheld, being impounded, being held back until the appeals process is finished by the school. And the reason for that, by the way, is because if Northwestern wins that appeals process, then those votes are somewhat irrelevant. But what's being done here is not irrelevant. If the Northwestern football players, which is being spearheaded by quarterback, former quarterback Kane Coulter, if they win or lose, doesn't matter. What is happening is that it is transcending college athletics. Don't you think other college athletes from around the country are taking notice right now? It doesn't matter what sport it is. Soccer, baseball, lacrosse, you name it. Other athletes are going to fight the NCAA over this. This all came about because Coulter thought that he was being treated unfairly, being taken advantage of. And I think a lot of football players around the country are also voicing the same concern over that. They want better medical coverage. They want part of the pie when it comes to money. And they want to be protected for their futures. And they feel that isn't happening right now. In fact, one of the Northwestern players is actually on the other side of the fence for this. This is co-captain Branded, and I might be saying his name wrong, Vidable, who, if you didn't see this, came out and said, before January, when all this started, we didn't hear any of this on our team who asked for something and didn't get it. So I'm not sure why we needed to change anything. Well, Brandon, change is going to happen regardless, whether it happens at Northwestern or it doesn't. But of course, we will find out if that actually goes through in the future. And the NCAA and Northwestern will be fighting this for at least the next couple of months. If not, it could take years from now. All right, we're now joined by Kevin Elliott, wide receiver of the Buffalo Bills on the pros and con. Really appreciate you joining us, Kevin. And uh, really, how is it in Buffalo right now? Is it still chilly like it has been for the past six or seven months? <laughs> yeah, very much so. Um, you know, I'm, I've been in Florida for a while, so I had to get adjusted once, once again to this weather, but at least it's not snowing. How do you get adjusted to something like that? I mean, honestly, you're coming from like 80, 90 degree weather, and you've been there for a year already. How do you get adjusted for something like that's like ni- negative 20 degrees out there? Yeah, you really, well, I haven't really got adjusted to it. I just put on more clothes, you know, the more layers, the better. <laughs> and it's always, uh, you can always make yourself warmer. You can't really take enough clothes off to uh, decrease the sweat, I guess, in the summer when you're in Florida. Exactly. Well, we were just yeah. talking about, Kevin, uh, about the forming of a union in college sports at Northwestern football players over there trying to historically decide on whether they will form a union or not. They casted their votes earlier this week. Those right now are being withheld, as I mentioned earlier, uh, until the appeal process takes place. But you, Kevin, played at Florida A&M, and it's not as big of a university as some of the major Division One college programs out there. For example, you were next to Florida State, the Ohio States of the world. 
But what is your stance on forming a college, uh, forming a union in college sports? Uh, do you think that that you were treated fairly when you were at FAMU? Yeah, I believe I was treated fairly. Um, of course, there's certain aspects that we feel like us as athletes shouldn't have to go through as far as worrying about how we're going to pay our rent and our lights getting cut off and things like that to that nature. And if, if that's the case, then I do agree with them joining that union because I feel like, you know, a lot of the football players, a lot of the football teams bring in the most money to the university. And it really would not hurt them at all to at least make sure we got a house to stay in and that we're eating every day and that should be the only thing we have to worry about. So in that aspect of it, yes, I do believe, I do agree with the union being joined over there. Well, regardless, you have signed a two-year deal with the Buffalo Bills after being an undrafted free agent out of college uh, about a year ago, two years ago now. And as a talented wide receiver coming into the NFL, undrafted, there are several other guys who have also made a name for themselves, especially in the Super Bowl. Jonathan Baldwin, Jermaine Curse. I'm sure you watched them during the Super Bowl last year. Uh, mm-hmm. The fact that there are so many undrafted players who are making the most out of their opportunity, do you feel there is more opportunity for undrafted free agents out there, especially with the NFL draft coming up? Yeah, most definitely, man. I believe every undrafted free agent that comes into the NFL is playing with a chip on their shoulder. You know, they're playing to prove something. And um, really the only thing between getting drafted and undrafted is the money and really your guaranteed spot, if you want to say it like that. But um, I thank God every day I went undrafted. I told my agent all I wanted you to do was get me on somebody's camp and I would do the rest. So I believe a lot of undrafted free agents come in with that same mindset, which is hungrier than you know some of the first, second round, first, second, third round draft picks. And uh, I believe that shows on the field. All right, Kevin Elliott of the Buffalo Bills joining us via Google Voice here on the Pros and Con. Kevin, you came in with the Jacksonville Jaguars released, and then the Buffalo Bills picked you up, signed to a two-year deal last year, unfortunately, out with the ACL injury. How did you deal with that, and what is your plan going into OTAs and minicamp? You know, I'm just blessed to be surrounded by a lot of positive people. Um... A lot of my brothers from family that went to school, you know, a lot of encouragement, my family, my mother and father, my fiance. And, um, you know, it was just, it was hard at first, I'm not going to lie. Watching, being able just to watch football and not be able to play, you know, but it was really, really humbling that they put me on IR because, you know, that showed me that every day I was doing something right and they wanted me to come back. So I just thought about that every day. And I just thought about it getting better every day. You know, one thing Sam you instilled in me is hard work. And I've never been afraid of that. So every day was the same routine, just trying to get better and better. And uh, this year is going to be real interesting because I got a lot of anger and a lot of things built up. And I plan on letting all that out on the field. So <laughs> uh, I, just, I definitely can't wait to, to touch down again. All right, man. Well, as a Buffalo Bill, you may be owned by Donald Trump soon. Who knows? What do you think of that? I think that would be pretty cool. I mean, as far as him rebuilding the facilities and, like, you know, more modernizing it, and um, I definitely don't – I hope he doesn't move out of Buffalo, though, because these fans definitely deserve, you know, a team here. And um, he's probably the best fans I ever played in front of. And – uh Moving out of Buffalo would be definitely devastating. So, um, as long as we stay in Buffalo, and you know, we'll see what happens. All right, Kevin. I know we can all watch you on the field, but I know you also try to be altruistic in your measures of reaching out to kids who are trying to aspire to be like you. Also, with your youth football camps, can you talk a little bit about that going into this summer and what your plans are for your youth football camps? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. This, is, this will be my fifth annual um, football camp in Orlando, Florida at the Inglewood Neighborhood Center. I actually started my senior year in high school, and um, it's just been getting bigger and bigger every year. And this year I'm actually implicating uh, a 707 between the high school there in the, in the Orlando area. So, you know, I mean, when I was a kid, I went to the Jeff Blake camp in Sanford, Florida. And ever since then, I always told myself I wanted to run the camps, you know, just reach out to the kids because that really impacted me. 
just being around NFL players. So, you know, that just, it just instilled in me when I had my chance, my opportunity, I started my camps. And um, it's just been getting better and better every year. I've been getting more NFL players come out there and help me. Um, my family brothers that I play with, they still come to this day to support me. And this year will be July 13th, the week after 4th of July. And um, I definitely can't wait. All right, Kevin, it's always great to talk to you, and hopefully I'll be able to see you soon. And we wish you great success uh, in your career in Buffalo, hopefully able to recover from that ACL injury and come back a lot stronger. Thanks for being on the show, Kevin. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for now, if you want to follow Kevin on Twitter, just go to Twitter and type in at Catching My Dreams. Always a good follow. Here is the music that we all love. Haters gonna hate. We know they are, but this time, it's definitely pertinent to this situation. Donald Sterling is going in this category for sure. Audio leaked last week of Sterling talking to his then-girlfriend and making racist comments. There is no place, I will say this right now, there is no place for an owner of an NBA team. He owns the NBA's Los Angeles Clippers, if you don't know already. There is no place for an owner to make racist remarks. Not by any means. And we're talking about the longest tenured owner in the NBA right now. Bought the team in 1981 and now is the owner for 33 years. Now, a lot of people have come out and people who are from the area who know Donald Sterling and have said that this is no surprise to them. So Sterling may have made some private off the record comments to some people uh, that probably have rubbed them the wrong way and just has not come out publicly. But this time it has gotten out publicly. Now, a lot of the players, you all are probably wondering, well, they should have some interaction with the owners. Believe it or not, a lot of the players probably do not interact with the owners as frequently as you would assume. So some of these players may have had a handshake or two with Donald Sterling, uh, but for the most part, they really do not, you know, mingle with him at all. They don't interact with him as much as you think. So, you know, a lot of these players are coming from all around the country and they're there to, to win games for the Los Angeles Clippers so it's all a surprise to them as well and they came out in protest in the playoff game against Golden State turning their warm-up shirts their warm-up jerseys inside out to show that they are not representing the name on the front all right time to take a look at what I like to call three me if you're not familiar, we're going to be talking about the three best things happening in sports and entertainment. Let's start with the Golden State Los Angeles Clippers game. Joey Crawford getting in front of Stephen Curry while he's taking a three-pointer. Listen, Joey Crawford has been in the league as a referee for a long time, but Joey, come on. You got to get out of the way. It looked like you were playing defense on Stephen. I don't think it really affected the game at all, but... Joey, really? Seriously, buddy? Come on. You're better than that, Joey. All right, next up, NFL schedules. Let's try to get this done the next minute. Probably a thing that stands out to me is the Green Bay at Seattle game to open the NFL season. Two great fan bases. Going to have a lot of Green Bay fans over in Seattle as they try to out-cheer, out-roar the 12th man. I like that, but the toughest, I think, on the NFL schedule slate has got to be the Oakland Raiders. I mean, come on, NFL. The Oakland Raiders, who have just been woeful in the past several years, will ha probably have to do more traveling than any NFL team this season. I think three of their four, four games, they're going to be on the East Coast. In their first four or five weeks, they're going to have to go to the East Coast and they'll have to go to London. That's just brutal. The easiest is probably a toss-up between Houston and Indianapolis. Houston and Indianapolis may have the two easiest opponents uh, in the AFC with Jacksonville and Tennessee. We'll see how that pans out. All right, last but not least, got to give a shout-out to maybe the most diehard Penguins fan you'll ever meet, a two-year-old showing his pure emotion during the Penguins playoff game against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Have you ever seen anything like this? 
This kid is going to grow up and maybe play in the NHL one day. He apparently has his own little hockey rink in his living room. So, hey, it gives other fans to obviously try to top that in the NHL playoffs. We don't talk NHL much, but that obviously deserves a shout out. All right, I appreciate everyone joining me today on the pros and con. Of course, you can take a look at this show every week, Mondays on YouTube, and we will do our best to get it up there. And again, you can follow me on Twitter at Jason Khan, WCTV. Until then, don't want to say goodbye, but I'll say see you next week. Keep it real, everyone.